everyone. Uh, welcome back to another open studio or studio hours. Um, I'm going to be working today just playing with some of the Marie's Masters watercolors. Um, we just got them in and I really want to play with them and check them out. So my idea is to today just play with the Reflections watercolor postcards and I've been getting lots of emails telling me to be ready for Valentine's Day and get presents for my sweetheart. So I'm going to make my sweetheart a postcard. It's put a fire under me to get thinking about Valentine's Day. And so around the studio I asked everybody what they would like to see and the Pac-Man frog came up and I found this great image of actually a horn frog that everybody wanted to see painted. And then there was suggested to make it a wizard, make it a witch, or make it something magical. So we're going to do a witchy magical frog and just try to use some of the fun colors and see what we can get. Um, let's see. And I'm going to try to connect on here real quick. So give me just a second. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, connected. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these. And I'm trying to decide if I want to have words above and below him and stick something punny. If anybody wants to think up a Valentine's Day pun that goes along with a wizard frog, let me know. I'll leave room just in case. Okay, I'm going to start making him oval here. There's body. If you guys have any questions, any art questions at all, it doesn't have to be related to drawing or watercolor, just let me know. I'm just gonna hang out for an hour and chill. If you were going the like wizarding route, you could say just go for like I put a spell on you. I How can see, we? I find you quite riveting, and that made me laugh. Because I want us to try to get frog in there too, so it's got a. It's like a. Okay, toe. I totally <laughs> love you. Um, you're totally magic. Oh. Ooh. That's you're onto something, Katie. Two and one. I like that. I hop. You will be my Valentine. Aww. <laughs> I like it. Hop in Prince Charming. <laughs> Hi Tim. I like Hop in Prince Charming. But then I feel like he needs to be writing something. to 
exaggerate his features. chunky arm. A little tiny hand. <laughs> Actually, what do you refer to frogs hands as? <laughs> do you call them hands? Does anybody know? Frog anatomy? <laughs> toes? Toad toes? I think I would have called them hands, and now I am questioning it. <laughs> right? But then does that mean he has feet? <laughs> he has hands. He has feet. No, Are these his feet, feet back there? popular. I'm gonna guess hands is right. That was my gut instinct at least. Tens is front feet. <laughs> so front feet, back feet. these fun patterns on him. Are you gonna stick to his like natural color scheme? Well there's a lot of like fun oranges and yellows, like some red in there. And there's some brown undertones as well. So I will probably and just up the vibrancy mm -hmm. on it so we can get some fun coloring. I thought about doing the whole picture in really blues, purples, and magenta and going That's what I was wondering. all out. Yeah, with the Valentine look. Yeah. But then I, I thought, uh, oh. I mean, he does, he's very nicely colored. So. Yeah, I, I like looking at him. And that he was the, there were two options and he won. He, frog, he won the frog beauty pageant, so. I'm gonna give him more of a belly. My husband tells me that I make all our animals fat because I think they're cuter that way. And that's not true. I don't want everybody thinking that my animals are morbidly obese and that I don't take care of them. They're very well taken care of and very loved and very healthy. But I do like how fat animals look. I just want to squeeze them. So, Chunky Frog was a good choice. I 
actually want to give him a little heart mark. Just pointing out where highlights are going to be now. Okay, the angelfish was not my fault. <laughs> Apparently I'm going down in history as the only uh, woman who has ever had a fat angelfish. And I don't know how it happened. They're supposed to turn and almost disappear because they're so thin when they face you. And mine just ended up kind of doing whoop. But it's okay. He, he was very happy. He got very, very big. I bet he liked it that way. I think so. I mean, I didn't get any complaints from him. Let's see. They just had the same disease as the angelfish. I don't know how they got fat. So you're bringing up the small, the small fit, uh, the tiny fish with pot bellies. <laughs> they were cute and happy. Great, right, I'm being, being food shamed. Me feel very smart. Thank you, Amanda. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're still making it through some rain. They keep changing up what's gonna happen with us, it seems, every few minutes. We're supposed to get snow tonight, and then it's gonna be tomorrow morning, then some places said tomorrow evening. I just want tomorrow night. Yeah. All my friends, we wanna go to our friend's house and have a slumber party, because he has a huge yard. Mm -hmm. That would be, that would be fun. I just don't want it to be too bad before it's time for slumber party. <laughs> right? That'll be awesome because then you can have some hot chocolate. Curl up in a bunch of blankets. Mm -hmm. I'm put little s here. I'm a little big on my frog, so we may not stick words here. Because I had a request for sparkles and I forgot I need to stick those in. Christina wants to know if she's going to get a rope. <laughs> well, 
Well, he's got all these fun little spikes. I don't know, should he have a robe? Cause I was thinking, wizardy hat, Allah, Fantasia, 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 stars oh bolted. merlin yeah well i can add some stars i guess my version of wizard is a little different than other generations no i like it wizarding hat i think that talks to you and tells you what house you're supposed to be in <laughs> everybody has a different idea of wizard but i do love the sorcerer's apprentice Yes, it's a classic. I'm not sure how I would get a robe on there right now. Can you live without the robe, Christina? This, this toad feels like a Hufflepuff to me. <laughs> <laughs> the wizarding world of toads. that coming out soon. Maybe. <laughs> I can make a second one with a robe. It'll be it'll be the response to this one, the response postcard the couple. This will be the boy frog and then we'll do a girl frog in a robe. Sorry about that. Been a little sniffly lately because it's been so cold. And when I go in and out of the cold, I just get the sniffles. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start inking this guy.
There's a good story going on in chat. That's good. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for it and then it just gets you. I mean, really, I I would want a talking frog too. This is a permanent gel ink pen. Um, it's from Pentel. Is I really is not what I typically use. I really like using um, Microns and the accurate drafting pens really technically my brain my brain just blinked which ones are accurate technical pens water yeah the water technical, technical pens okay i didn't know if they Fine had liners. a they go by a lot of names <clears throat> okay yeah but those are what i really like to use problem. <laughs> Missing out on a good fried sandwich. I really love old illustrations. Um, so a lot of people say that my illustration style is a little bit old school with the line work. And this is just because my um, mother used to read me a bunch of poetry books and things when I was a kid that had these gorgeous, fully illustrated pages to go along with the, the poetry. And so I just grew up seeing that, and it just started kind of being emulated in my, my artwork. So I love uh, really detailed illustrations, and I also love uh, lots of line work.
How well does Lucas watercolor flow in mass? I'm just trying to figure out what. There's two kinds of Lucas. There's pans. Mm -hmm. And there's the two watercolors. Mm -hmm. So the pans Pan. light up pretty quickly as soon as you hit the water with them. But the tubes themselves are going to come out pretty thick. And just how much how well it flows depends on mm -hmm. how much water you put in it. Right. Yeah. So is this depending on if you're going to use the tubes or the pans? And like Katie was saying, the um, pans will activate quick but the tubes it'll just depend on how much you're using um, for them to really get going. Is that helpful? I hope it was. Oh, from the tube. without mixing the water? Like how thick? It's pretty, it's pretty it's good. Pretty I'll grab one real quick and show. Yeah, it's pretty substantial. Um, it's, there should be some of that. Yeah, we can get some out and pour it. It's pretty thick because it's really pigmented. in it. Mm -hmm. I got my because I like it the Yeah. The Lucas watercolors are a lot of fun. Let's see. So. Eh. So I don't know if you can see. It's almost even, almost like an acrylic. How thick it, it. It's really pigment packed, so it's pretty yeah, it's so, a high end watercolor. Lots of yeah, lots of pigment in this one. You can see just how solid it is. Let's see. Do it dry. So hopefully you can see. And that's just what it's like without water. It should be mentioned that they are made to work with water. Yeah, but they are, um, yeah, they are made to work with water. If you use it but straight out of the tube, I would definitely. Yeah, if you're using it out of the tube, it's not gonna go very far, but it goes a long way because it's so pigmented like this, and that's the thickness there. Yeah, he speaks he, for that. he likes to lay it, it down with like um, a brush and a palette knife. Oh, some of his cool. Okay. Yeah. That I sounds mean, really, really awesome. Well mm -hmm. knife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. That sounds It's thick, fun. but it's not goopy. Yeah, right. It's smooth. It's smooth. Uh -huh. it's, yeah, it's really fine yeah. build. And you could see that when I squeezed it out, it didn't come out in blobs. Thank you, Lipsita Art. I'm glad you like our magical toad here. Yeah, they are. They're really a great paint. I love uh, using the Lucas. I find myself turning to it quite often in my studio. Just because there is such a wide color line and, um, sorry, I was thinking about toes. Uh, <laughs> Frog toes. Um, there's such a wide color line and the pigmentation 
is just great. I don't have to use very much, so that's always really nice. I love being able to conserve as much as possible with my art supplies. Magenta and dioxazine. Mm -hmm. The first time I used it, I said, What is this? <laughs> you started singing the Jack Skeleton song. You know that I did. <laughs> What's this? What's this? There's a no toad that is perfectly round. techniques across the mediums. That's a good thing for a lot of people to try is just uh, testing your different mediums and seeing what you might discover. Because I found just in playing with my materials I've come across like um, several things that I love to do that I wouldn't have otherwise just thought of to do like um, or things that they didn't teach me at uh, SCAD. I went to Savannah College of Art and Design, and I'm a traditionally trained artist, but what's great about art is that you learn the rules so you can break them. So that's that's been most of the fun of being an artist for me, is really practicing different techniques and coming up with my own ways to do things. I can hear the rain coming down outside now. It's very soothing, honestly. Yeah, it is. Swirls here, just for fun. And there's this little heart birthmark.
here to check out your artwork. Is it D Von D? D Van D? Um, Cause I love seeing when people experiment with their artwork. frog. He is a love lizard. Frog. Love frog. Love wizard love frog. I was Edison. trying to put love in amphibian and it does not work. A love phibian? I was trying it. Am, am, am love it am love <laughs> It sounds like um, some uh, somebody from a different planet, an alien race. Mm -hmm. of some sort. I'm just gonna add extra marks back here where I think on my toad they look good. Thank you, Emmy. Hey. Oh, D. Van D. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Do. Do Von Do. I don't know, that, that has kind of a ring to it. Okay, yeah, we'll check that out. If you uh, share a, some of your artwork on the Facebook page, we'll definitely look at that. You know, it's fun to get to see other people's stuff. They always get to see yes. their stuff, but like, mm -hmm. we talk to them and don't get to see like their faces or like their art and stuff. It's fun when we actually do. I keep asking people um, when I get on here to show us your stuff because we really do like looking at it we love seeing everybody being creative because that's all we do here is try to focus on helping people be creative so it makes us happy when we see people doing it it's inspiring us too like it's yeah nice to, like see other people's yeah artwork and see different ways things are being done for sure. You're like, oh, I saw somebody do this. I want to try something like that. I've done that so many so times. times. Yeah. They immediately pull out things. I'm uh -huh. like, well, let's find out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've definitely been inspired by artists on our live page before. 
Because sometimes you get tired and you've been creating over and over and you can get drained. Like even though it's something you love to do, lots of people do that with something that they love, turn um, something that was what they considered a hobby into work. And so then it becomes hard to enjoy, you know, art anymore as an example. So when you see other people doing like amazing things or new techniques and um, really having fun, it makes you want to do the same and helps you get out of a rut. Home and it's like it's like when you work in an ice cream store. You don't want to go home and eat ice cream too. Yeah, that's it's true. Really you can have too much of a good thing. But every once in a while, you find a new flavor, and you're like, "Ooh, let's try it." Yes. <coughs> you get curious. Okay, so he's got little wizard stars. Jamie, you got about 15 minutes left. Okay. Time goes fast. Yeah, I may get down to laying down a little bit of watercolor this go. I may have to finish him off camera. to grab my vanish eraser real quick and get rid of the graphite. Be right back. And just get rid of my working lines. Oh, I missed a little bit of his back there. I'll go back in with my pen in a second. <laughs> yes, please hit the like button. Me and my frog love love. <laughs> oh yeah, getting started with projects is difficult. Um, sometimes I find what's helped me, and it was actually something my professor taught me a long time ago 
is to have a bunch of words in a hat or a bowl and just completely random and then pick three and then that's your prompt and then draw and paint from there and what you could do is you could have three different bowls have one that has maybe the name of an animal and then maybe one has an action like jumping jacks and then one bowl is for a medium which you'll create it in Jimmy, your hair <laughs> what about oh oh sorry guys I'm gonna move my big head back here Rolling dice is really good too, Emmy. Hey Charlie, I hope you're doing well over there, I'm glad you're tuning in, we miss you. And D Van D, if you end up doing that, also post that if you use that idea, because I'd be curious to see what you come up with. Those usually end up being some of the most fun paintings I do. And Charlie, if you try that, I want to see your artwork as well. minutes left so if you guys have any more questions or any more good toad and frog Valentine's Day puns go ahead and put them in chat to see it oh yeah the the um, heart on his cheek because he's a love frog thank you Kantra right Diva and D um, so the subject could be, you know, animals or plants, clouds, whatever, and the mediums that you like using. Or you could, if you want, pick a medium you've never done before 
and that can also help you break into something new because then you somehow sometimes when we're given roles that helps us think outside the box at the same time as keeping us a little railed in so we feel safe to try different things different mediums um, without being afraid of going over the edge and completely ruining it because we have been, we've kind of given ourselves the freedom to play. You're saying this is a new thing and you're going to try to come up with an idea based off of those three words. And it's okay to mess up because you are just supposed to come up with that idea, not make something you know, that you consider gallery worthy or it's going to change the face of art as we know it. Yes, only happy accidents. Happy little accidents. Uh, what did she wink with? That it doesn't smear when you were right? I think she meant ink. Oh. So I'm using the Energel Permanent Gel Ink Pen by Pentel. And it's a .7. Hi, Ari. I hope everybody's staying warm. We're still waiting to see if we get snow. It hasn't snowed yet while I've been standing here. I could hear the rain. But I'm ready for snow. We haven't really had much this year. We had like a light powdering, but I want snow everywhere. I want everything to be sparkling so I can have my hot chocolate with my cats by the fireplace. That is a true test of bravery right there. I'm sticking a happy little tree in there. Now on that note, I find that when I have finished uh, pieces, I need to kind of keep myself away from them. Because if I have a piece that I considered finished, and look back at it. Sometimes I want to go in and touch it up. You like fidget with it? Yeah, mm -hmm. and overwork it. And then it ends up being, you know, something I'm not happy with because I've gone past You're the like, point. Oh, if only I could have. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. And then next painting. <laughs> like, we'll do better next time. Everything is a learning experience. So. Even if you've been practicing for 
50 years. You never stop learning. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna start off with my lightest color on my palette, which is gonna be the yellow. That Marie's activates really well. Okay. Little light base coat. That's a good policy, D. Mandy. I feel like maybe if I sign my pieces immediately, that might discourage me from going back and reworking them. I always wait until the last minute to sign them. I'm really bad about that. I've had art pieces in shows that I forgot to sign. Oh, Kathleen, I know our winners have been getting pushed back more and more over here. And I think we're gonna start having, I think spring is gonna become winter and so on and so forth down the line. We're just gonna rotate everything out. In North Carolina, our weather is bipolar, so it changes even from hour to hour. Thank you, Jackie. This is our love frog. And it looks like we're about to be, well, it looks like our time's up actually. So I've started putting in the base coat. And if you guys want, I can go ahead and finish our love frog Valentine's Day postcard on camera and post it for you. Um, if there are any other questions, Can you go over the supplies you used one more time? Okay, so um, with working with my frog, um, I used the Marie's Masters watercolors, and these are super vibrant, and I'm sorry I didn't get to do more with them, but we'll go ahead and make a video for them so you can see them. Um, I'm using the Reflections watercolor postcards, and these are great. Like, these are wonderful to send as gifts. You have the back that's lined. Um, let's see. I vanish eraser. Used the Inner Gel Permanent Gel Ink pen by Pintel. And I've also been using the Mimic Kalinsky Short Rounds. And this is just a great little set when you're working smaller. Oh, and the Raffinet pencils. Those are great sketch pencils. Emmy said, where are you going to post the video at the end? We'll put it on Jerry's, Jerry's Live. Live. Okay. Yeah. We'll do Jerry's Live. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out with us today. And I hope you're staying warm again. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on another studio, open studio, or studio hours. <laughs>